you please welcome Mr. Tim Clark? <laughs> It's not from you, you didn't clap at all, did you? You come in here looking like a deaf leopard roadie. <laughs> and then look at me as much as I, I'll take you out, skinhead. <laughs> to dinner, perhaps, I don't know. And you, hell, how, because I was to you in a minute, didn't you? And you were absolutely bloody right, but I don't think I should take the mickey out of you at all, sir, because I think God got there first, really. <laughs> Hang on, I just want to come down and smile to the camera. Hey, and I've just spotted you, so you've got, uh, yeah, you, you've got a massive quiff, haven't you? you? You're sitting there thinking, I'm like the saint. Yeah. I know what you mean. I, look, I, I looked in the mirror before I came out tonight and I put my suit on. I looked in and I went, dickhead, sadly. It's nice to be here. I have to say as well, and I know comedians come on stage and say this, but I do have an absolutely terrible hangover. I've come out of it sort of four o'clock this afternoon. And what is it about when you drink? You can't walk, you can't talk, all of a sudden, you think you can dance. <laughs> oh, you know that leopard, don't you? Hey? That one-armed drummer gets going and you don't bloody stop, do you? <laughs> Def Leopard got a one-armed drummer, so... <laughs> because you're not into that, you're more a sort of um, James Galway man, aren't you? <laughs> I don't drink and drive, I did it Christmas. I had um, three pints and I got in the car and I drove. I'm not proud of this. And I was sort of limiting myself. And my wife is with me in the car. It's like thinking, wife, you're as bent as a nine bob note, mate. <laughs> well, well, I'm not, but there's something about the saint that tempts me, I'll tell you. And, And I'm driving along, and I'm a, bit, I'm a bit drunk, not completely paralytic. And um, the police come up behind us, blue light flashing, and, and they flash me. And uh, my wife says to me, drive like you did on your test. So I did. Three-point turn. <laughs> Hill start. It was all going so well until they smashed into the back of me on the emergency stop. <laughs> Even Def Leppard's clapping now. I think you're at Glastonbury, don't you, dear? I've seen those cigarette papers on the table as well. Copper comes up to the window. He says, I'm going to have to ask you to take a test, sir. I said, what test that? Like it's going to be the Daz challenge. <laughs> but I was all right. I was all right. And this, um, this, uh, this, this was very different when I went to Ireland sometime after that. Now, I know we got some people from Ireland in. Am I right? Yeah, yeah whereabouts are you from in Ireland, madam? That was a sort of hit and run shout, wasn't it? Yeah! Now actually what happened, she shouted and the saint pulled her, didn't you? You've given her a seeing to already, haven't you, saint? And I was in Ireland, I've been working in Dublin, Galway, Waterford and Limerick and I was driving back to the airport, Dublin airport, very early in the morning and then I like that, did I do it again? I was trying to... You've got to get this in because it's like tripped up and it's sort of funny or funnier than the material anyway and I, and I came out and I tripped up like that and I was driving back to Dublin airport very early in the morning and this Irish copper jumped out the middle of nowhere with one of these speed guns and he pointed it at me and I stopped and he came out of the car and I wound the window down and he said to me, did you realise sir you were doing 50 miles an hour? And I said yeah and he went, alright then, on your way. <laughs> So what do you, what do you do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? What do you do for a living? Sales. You're in sales, right? Big issues, stuff like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what, what are you selling, sir? What, what sort of stuff are you selling? Cable TV. Cable TV. Ah. You didn't see his eyes there, ladies and gentlemen, because when he said cable TV, he actually sort of went, cable TV. <laughs> 
Yeah, I've got one of these mobile phones, and uh, you ring it up. You can ring one two one, and a woman comes on and says, uh, says there are no messages, right? So I, I rang this woman up, and she says there are no messages, and I was really excited because it was the first day I got it, and rang up again. There are no messages, <laughs> and I swear to God, it was a tape message. But I swear to God, the more I rang up, the more annoyed she got. <laughs> There are no messages. <laughs> anyway, the whole thing went wrong. And um, so I looked in the, in the pamphlet to see what was wrong. And it said, um, if in doubt, consult your dealer. And I thought, well, this is hardly the time to be buying drugs. <laughs> that one was for you, Dad. All right. <laughs> Tell the Dutch, they're the one for, for drugs. I was in Holland. I love it in Holland. Oh, security at the airport, very tight. I got to the airport. And the bloke said to me, are there any electrical goods in your bag, sir? I said, like what? He said, like heated rollers. <laughs> oh, yeah, just at the bottom by the curling tongs. <laughs> anyway, Holland, brilliant place. Two things about the Dutch. One, they do indeed take lots and lots of drugs. Two, they wear clogs. Now, I don't think these two things are coincidental. Because let's face it, you've got to take a lot of drugs to wear clogs, haven't you? <laughs> hey, Johan, I'm going for a walk. Shall I wear these comfortable cushion-soled loafers? No, Marco. Why not wear these bits of heavy plywood? <laughs> which bounce up and down uncomfortably as you walk. <sighs> Great idea, Johan. <laughs> Listen, that's all for me. I've loved this. Thank you so much. Good night.